Good morning. Welcome to Creepwood this morning. I'm going to ask you that we all stand together. We're going to sing our first song, which is Be Still My Soul. In you I rest. Here we go. Please sing with us. Be still my soul. The Lord is on thy side. Bear patiently. The cross of grief or pain lead to thy God to order and provide in every change he faithful will remain be still my soul thy best thy heavenly friend through so Be still, my soul, thy God doth undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Thy hope, thy confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright. Within your hands 
that one more time. Please be seated. Well, good morning. Welcome to Creevewood Baptist Church. I'm so glad that you're here. Those of you watching online, I'm so honored that you're worshiping with us online this morning. And to all who are weary and need rest, to all who are lonely and need friends, to all who sin and need a Savior, our church, we open wide our doors for you and I'm so glad you're here today if you're visiting with us I would love a chance to get to know you I'll be at the back left in the pastor's corner and I have a gift for you if you would come and just talk with me and fill out a little information for us so that we can get a chance to get to know you uh, here in the next coming days happy Mother's Day <laughs> apparently this is a repeat so we're gonna try this my daughter's expired me so I'm gonna say happy Mother's Day y'all gonna repeat that back happy Mother's Day Happy Mother's Day. All right. I'm so honored that you're here on Mother's Day. And, and mothers, I hope that you feel honored and blessed today. And I know for some of you that this is a painful day uh, for a very variety of reasons. And so I just want to let you know that on this day, we see you as well. And we want to honor you as well. Uh, as a matter of fact, after church, uh, after our worship service is over, uh, as you're exiting out the back, we have a flower for every woman in here. And so we would love for you to take a flower as a gift for us on here on this Mother's Day uh, home. Uh, graduating high school seniors and college students, you may apply for a $1,000 scholarship. Applications are due May the 14th, and you can contact our church office for uh, more details. VIPs, y'all are meeting this week in the Fellowship Hall for a, a covered dish lunch program. So if you are above 50, you're considered a VIP. I am getting closer than I care to admit. Uh, and there will be a Christian bluegrass band performing. Woo, nothing says Nashville like Christian bluegrass band, y'all. This is awesome. Okay, would y'all join me in prayer today? It's been a few moments giving thanks to God for your mom. The life that she gave you. It's just good to honor our parents. Maybe, maybe you're here and Mother's Day is a bit painful for you, or you know somebody who it's painful for. Bring those up to the Lord right now. Bring that person, bring your tears to the Lord. Cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. Now let's pray as our Lord taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is our prayer this morning as a church, for our church, for our country, for everyone in our lives. Let's sing this together. This is our prayer. Make us one, Lord. Make us one.
let that be our prayer this morning. Let's sing this again, church. Make us one. Make us one. going to be reading Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Thank you. Amen. Thanks, Maria. Okay, we're going to stand again. We're going to do what that verse just said, and we're going to praise the Lord this morning. This is Days of Elijah. Come on, stand with me. So one, two. Don't be afraid to express yourself this morning, church. Here we go. These are the days. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant, Moses, righteousness being restored. Great trials, a famine and darkness is the Lord. Still we the voice of the desert crying, prepare the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee. Together. These are the days. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. Listen to these words. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are as white in the world. trumpet call, lift your voice, it's the year of jubilee, and out of science hill salvation comes. Here we go, church. There's no God like Jehovah. Let's sing it. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 We're gonna take it up now. Here we go. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 We got one more. Let's go, church. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no 
God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Thank you. Amen. Please have a seat. I got to try to preach after that. John 13. John 13 is our passage today. John 13. Uh, we'll start in verse 1 in just a moment. But as you're turning there, did you all know that sometimes... Teenage boys do not pay attention to details. Were y'all aware of that? So when I was 15, uh, I was going to a camp. Uh, it was a servant leadership camp. It was one of the first times I'd get to go to something like this. It was at Dallas Baptist University. And I was really excited about it. And I was packing myself and I got everything I thought that I needed. And then I got there and realized... I only have one pair of shoes, and only the socks that I was wearing with that one pair of shoes. <laughs> I had no socks all week long, and this was a really kind of labor-intensive camp. We, were, uh, we did discipleship groups in the morning. We did service in the afternoon. I'm talking mucking out houses. I'm talking uh, serving some of the uh, un uh, underbelly of Dallas and, and painting and all good stuff to make you messy, and then we'd have worship at night, and we'd uh, repeat it all again, all again, all again. And so all week long, I'm either wearing no socks with my shoes, which I don't know if you've been around teenage boys, that's not a good smell, okay? Or I'm wearing socks with my shoes and trying to hang them up at night, all right? So this is, this is, this is where we're at. Well, the last day, to my horror, they did a foot washing ceremony. I'm looking at my counselor, it's a great big man, his name is Casey, and I'm thinking, oh Lord, I'm going to give him athlete foot or something. And it was amazing, and I, and I told Casey, I said, hey Casey, you know, you really don't need to do this, like I had, I, I, I forgot socks, you know, and I'm, I'm really sorry about that. He goes, and he takes my foot, and he dips it in the water as quickly as he could, and he washed it. Then they took a towel and dried it off, gave it to me, said, remember what we did today, do it likewise. So I'm going to ask every one of y'all to remove your shoes right now. I'm totally kidding. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to see you squirm. I, had, I still have that towel, and uh, it's sitting in a box in our shed. Every once in a while, I'll go up there and look through old memories, and I'll see that towel, and it reminds me, reminds me that life is not about me. Life's not about me. I, I have to admit that uh, when I get into my sinful self, my flesh, as Paul says, uh, I think the language today that's used is your shadow self. When I get into those spaces, I become a very selfish person. Even the things I do for other people have a secret motivation behind with me, right? I know none of y'all are like that at all, right? Okay, apparently it is just me. Okay. Um, but I look at that towel, and I look at the story that we're about to read. And I remember that thriving life is a life that's actually not about yourself. Driving life is about walking with Jesus. And the natural result of walking with Jesus is going to be a thriving life. And the natural result of that is a life filled of hope. Hope where you're looking forward to the good that is to come. 
And then you put your confidence in that hope. You put your confidence in that. We call that faith. It's a life of faith. And then out of that faith, because of what Christ has done for you, faith in who Jesus said he was, faith in what Jesus did at the cross for our sins, faith in the type of life that Jesus taught us to live, faith that Jesus really did rise again from the dead, faith that he's coming back. And our sorrows and our griefs and our heartaches and our longings are going to be turned right. And it was out of love that Christ did this for us. And so you go from hope to faith to love. You're, you're starting to will the good of the people around you. You're starting to will the good of the world around you because God willed the good for you in Christ Jesus because he loves you. You need a shepherd. There's all kinds of shepherds competing for your attention in this world. Saying, follow me, follow me, follow me. Do this product, do this life, do this way, and you will have a successful life. But no, the one shepherd we need is the good shepherd. That leads into relationships that we have. And our relationships... Healthy relationships flow out of our relationship with God, out of a healthy relationship with God. The vine, we're the branches. Today we're wrapping things up in our Thrive series. A life that thrives serves. A life that thrives serves. There's an organization that I, that I love. And one of their values is hospitality heals. Isn't that good? Hospitality heals. We're coming out of this pandemic right now. You know what's going to be really important for churches to do? Provide hospitality. There are people who are hurting, there are people disconnected, people who are lonely, and we provide hospitality, guess what? They're connected again. A life that thrives serves. Let's read about it in in, in John 13, starting in verse 1. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress. The devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. They came to Simon Peter. He said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't realize what I'm doing now, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who've had a bath only need to wash their feet. The whole body's clean. You're clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. That's why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you, he asked them. You call me teacher, Lord. Rightfully so, that's, that's what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master. Nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Would you join me in prayer? 
Now, God, open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, open our hearts to receive a word from you. Now, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and redeemer. In Christ's name that we pray, amen. Jesus and his disciples had had just a crazy week. They'd walked in as conquering heroes almost. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And Jesus had cleansed the temple. He had been questioned by religious authorities. And now they're sitting down for one of their last meals in the upper room. And in all the excitement that had taken place... Nobody had gone up to wash the feet. This was a common job, but often left for the lowest on the totem pole. Most people that day wore sandals, some kind of leather sandal. And so uh, if you've been to Jerusalem even today, there's still some dusty roads around in Jerusalem. And what happens when you max dust and feet in sandals? Gross, right? This is a gross job, but it's a job that, that's important to do. It's part of living in hospitality in the ancient world. And so in all the excitement, you can imagine the disciples just chatterboxing away about all the things that they had seen, all the things that they had been experiencing, what this person was saying about Jesus, what this person was saying about what they're about, or maybe they're living in a little bit of fear, the religious leaders, they saw them huddling in the corner. What is all this about? And then little did they see Jesus sneaking over, taking off his cloak. Wrapping a towel around himself and picking up a basin of water. He begins to wash their feet. Now, I love the way that John frames this, though. He frames this with, he loved those whom he had chosen and he loved them to the end. And then he says about Jesus that God had given him all power and authority. In this world. So this, this is a story that starts off about power and love. This is a story that starts off with Jesus uh, uh, knowing that he has all things under his control. All things under his power. And how does he choose to use his power? He does the lowest job. He serves. Simon Peter protests, this is not right. This is not the way things are done in this world, Jesus. You are the Lord. You're the king. The kings don't get down on their knees and wash feet. Kings don't do that. Lords and masters don't do that. That's what their servants are for. Why are you doing this, Jesus? Yes, Jesus has given an example of service here, but he is showing how his type of power in the world actually turns the world's type of power upside down. In this broken and sinful world, power is one of the biggest temptations that we have in this world. You've heard the cliche, absolute power corrupts what? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely it does. In fact, there has been some neuroscience done behind people who have been in positions of power for long periods of time. It actually does damage to the brain to be in power for a long time. It's amazing. That's why Jesus, even though he had all the power in the world, what did he choose to do with it? He chose to give it away. He chose to use it to serve. Don't. Don't wash me. Jesus, this is not the way things are done. This is not the way that things are handled in this world. No, I need to wash your feet, Jesus. Jesus says, you don't get it now, but you will. I used to hate it when my dad said that. And now I say it. 
Don't get it now. You will. Well, then wash all of me, Jesus. Jesus looked and said, no. You don't need that. You just need your feet washed right now. A small observation about this passage that you might miss unless you just keep reading on. Beginning, John noted that the devil had already prompted Judas to betray Jesus. Judas does not leave until the very next scene. What does that mean? It means that Jesus washed Judas' feet too. He washed Peter's feet, who would deny him three times. He washed Thomas's feet, who wouldn't believe that he was risen from the dead. And he got up with his own two feet. And in John's gospel, he marched his way right to Calvary. Where on the cross, he would take the sins of the world upon himself. He gave himself up in self-sacrificial love. He loved the world. Love those he calls his own to the very end. The end of the cross. And on the third day, and on the third day, he rose again. That post-resurrection that the disciples understood what Jesus had done. And how they were to live their lives once Jesus came back to the Father. They live lives of service. A life that thrives, serves. A life that thrives, serves. So I guess the question in here for you all is who you're serving? Who are you serving? Now, most of the time, service is is something simple. It's a note that's written. It's a meal that's made. Sometimes, it's as simply as showing up and your presence making the difference in all the world. But who are you serving? Who are the people in your life that that are serving? Maybe, just maybe some of you all, though, You need to be served and let yourself be served. You notice who did the first one who was doing the serving? Who was that? Jesus. Some of y'all need to let Jesus serve you. Be a church that serves. When I was in seminary, uh, we went through a transition of deans. Uh, Paul Powell was the original dean when I was there. Some of y'all may know that name. He was a head of Guide, what's now Guidestone uh, for a while. Um, but uh, David Garland, some of y'all may know David's name. Uh, uh, he became dean of Truett Seminary while I was there. And I would, every year they would do a chapel. The first chapel service of the year is something called Convocation. Anybody remember Convocation Chapel? Okay, so here's what Convocation Chapel is. All the professors put on their very fancy robes, and they come, and they sit up on the stage, and they basically say, we're smart, and you're not. <laughs> All right? And they kind of give the vision for the school for the year. It's kind of what, what ends up happening. But first year I was there, I went to convocation, and uh, I went to Baylor, and, and um, they brought Judge Baylor. That's who Baylor's named after, Judge Baylor. They brought his military sword down. He served in the Texas uh, Republican um, Army. They brought his military sword down. And uh, it becomes this major scene in there. The next year, when Dean Garland took over, 
Instead of the sword, he brought a basin of water and a towel. And he sat it on the pulpit. And he said, we're up here, we're wearing all our fancy clothes. But if, he's telling the faculty this, if, if we don't take up this towel, we'll do those students no good. And he told us, students, he said, students, you're going to serve in churches and nonprofits, and you're going to serve in all kinds of different places all around the world. He said, if you do not take this towel up, and if we do not teach you to take this towel up, you're going to harm the kingdom of God. Whoa! A church that thrives is a church that serves. A church that thrives is a church that serves. A church that thrives is churches that are willing to say, we'll take the towel up. We'll take the towel up. <laughs> God, we don't know where you want us to serve yet, but we'll take the towel up. It could be in hospitality, greeting people as they walk in the door. It could, could be in children's uh, area children's ministry, youth ministry. It, it, it could be in senior adult ministry. We need people to come and sit with seniors right now and to reconnect them. It could be. It could be with among the poor in Nashville, whom we will serve. I don't know. Could be in in uh, Honduras and Guatemala. It could be in 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 Lebanon, where some of our partnerships are. It could be anywhere. We want our church to thrive. We're going to take up the towel. We're going to follow our Jesus. Who asked us to serve as he served us. So this week, this week, who will you serve? Let's pray. Here in a moment, we're, we're going to take part of the Lord's Supper. And we're going to prepare our hearts right now. Take the bread and the cup. I hope you all got a packet as you were coming in. What I love about this meal is it reminds us Jesus served us by giving his life on behalf of our sins. We find forgiveness. His body broken, his blood shed for us. But it also reminds us that we are to live a life patterned after Jesus. As we serve. Take a few moments now. Maybe some of y'all need to confess. Maybe some of y'all need to bring a burden to God. Maybe some of y'all need to pray about who can I serve this week. Take a few moments to prepare your heart for the Lord's table. Maybe some of y'all need some extra prayer this week. You're struggling. If that's you, every head bowed and every eyes closed right now. If that's you, would you look at me? I need somebody to pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. God, I lift up my brothers and sisters. It is with humility and grace that we come to your table today. I pray that as we remember these symbols, your body broken for us and your blood poured out for us.
that it would inspire us to live lives of service, of forgiveness, and of grace. Bless this time at the table together. In Christ's name, amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me for whenever you eat this bread drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes we've heard the word of the Lord into the Lord's table today and we want to give you a chance to respond respond by receiving Christ or baptism or joining our church or maybe just you just need to spend a few moments marveling at how good and great God is however it is you need to respond I pray that you do so as we stand and as we sing great thou art, O oh Lord my God. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power through the universe displayed then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul
that you've been blessed today. Please allow me to bless you and we'll be dismissed. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his countenance towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.